kicking off this pink edition of the Sportsman Zone with football, Jamaica's top flight competition. The rare nephew of Premier League returns on Sunday and fans got a taste of what to expect with the Boomer Classico on Wednesday night. The much anticipated contest is a pre-season fixture featuring two of the country's fiercest inner city rivals, Arnett Gardens and Waterhouse. And for the second consecutive year, Arnett prevailed, winning 2-0 in Drewsland. Both goals were scored from the penalty spot. Shai Smith in the sixth and substitute Rashiki Kelson in the 63rd, giving Xavier Gilbert his first notable victory as Arnett head coach. Good, just yourself uh, for what is to come. Um, I mean, in the night, in the evening, it's cool, the atmosphere, good for football, um, good rivalry again. Also, uh, so and bragging rights, you know, so it was good. I mean, some new players too. So it's good to get this out of the way. So I mean, in preparation for the season, and I'm happy for them. And, 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 and kudos and credit to the fans, you know, it's unfortunate that we couldn't have a game Sunday and a lot of them travel here today and this is for them. Yeah, Lance and Mariah, this Bummel Classico contest was set for earlier this week. It was to be in the community of Arnett Gardens, but unfortunately, um, because of uh, a violent incident, um, the game was uh, postponed and then moved uh, to Jerusalem. But it's good to see these inner city teams uh, going head to head ahead of the start of the season. And I'm even happier to see Arnett Gardens coming out on top with the 2-0 victory. But Xavier Gilbert now um, getting a pretty good start to his life in the jungle. Yeah, it's exactly what Xavier Gilbert would need, Ricardo. You know, new coaching setup, new team. So for him, it's what he would expect and want from his team. What I will say though is, you know, I spoke to Kimani. He's one of our producers here at Sportsmax and he went to the match. He was able to file the report for us. And I was asking him about the turnout, the atmosphere. So he told me that, you know, the crowd was there because of the new location. A lot of people came out to support. Very, very happy to get football back up and running. So where the turnout is concerned, he felt as if the crowd was there. And of course, the teams got the required support that they wanted. The quality of football, though, he said it was not top top class football that you would expect but I think it's understandable because you know you're just getting ready for the season you're not in the season as yet it's a pre-match rivalry so I think it's exactly what we would expect Waterhouse would walk away feeling a bit hard done that you know they didn't even get a goal on the score sheet but it's good fun as coach Xavier Gilbert said it's for bragging right so Arnett walks away with this one yeah, and Waterhouse would be a little bit unsettled, even though I take your point, Mariah, that you know they are in pre-season, so they aren't really peaking yet. But they had a bad season last year. Waterhouse were below par last year, so um, starting off this season or ahead of the season with a loss won't be you know, a, a good result on, on their part. Uh, having said that, both teams have a lot of work to do because there are other teams in the league like Cavalier, Harborview and Dunbar Holden who have been playing CONCACAF uh, Caribbean Cup Championship football who are already in gear and ready to start the season um, in reasonably good um, match competitive shape. So um, I think this is a good result for Arnett Gardens with their new coach. Arnett is not a very easy place to coach at and um, uh, we still don't know the reasons why Paul Teagut Davis and uh, Eric Rademacher's um, were not retained for this season having done so well last season. Well as regular season champions, but disappointed in the playoffs. So um, Arnett turning over a new leaf here with a new coach. And he'll be under the microscope because Arnett Garns fans are not easy to please. Yeah, that is a fact, Lance. You, you just made a point relating to the fact that Cavalier, Dunbeholden, um, Harborview have been active playing Caribbean Cup football. Um, do you think that is something that could hurt them at the back end of this Premier League season? Um, and, and when teams maybe like Arnett Gardens and so on um, would be still relatively fresh, they would have started their campaigns significantly earlier? Yeah, potentially it can. The fact is it depends on how deep their squads are. And um, the coach would have to rotate players and ensure that they, they last the season. Having said that, if they go on to do well in the CONCACAF Caribbean Cup, it will boost their confidence and their 
their, their aura of being champions of Caribbean Cup football, or even if they get to the final, it would be something that would boost them as a, as from yeah. the image standpoint and certainly personally as players. So right. I, I would suspect that if they go on to go really deep into the Caribbean Club Championship, which will Harbourview and Cavalier into the semis, so if either of them um, go on to the final and win, I, I, I would think that it would give them the sort of boost you know, confidence-wise to, to, to last the season. And um, I think that the, the onus would be on the coaching staff to ensure that they use their players in a way that will allow them to, to you know, uh, do well throughout the rest of the entire season. Because we know that based on the format, the regular season is important, but not that important. Yeah. It doesn't it's, make you sense you're doing well in the regular season and then you go to the playoffs and mm -hmm. flop as Arnett Gardens did last season. So... Well, um, I wouldn't say they flopped, but uh, they disappointed because based on their regular season performance, a lot of Arnett Gans fans were expected that they would win yes. the, yeah. the Premier League and, and they think didn't. A lot and of they, they didn't even get to the final. Yeah. Yeah, so that would be disappointing. I think with all of these things, we've been in sports, we've been watching a strategy. Like with every advantage, we could find two disadvantages for that advantage. So for me, it really comes down to how the coach decides to strategize everything. Who does he use? Who does he rest? Because at the end of the day, we could still say that a team playing, Ricardo, is in form versus a team that's rusty. And then that would be an advantage for playing football all the time before. So it's really how coach decides to create his strategy. And you know, when I think about it from a track and field standpoint, right, Lance and Mariah, there is a science to getting athletes to peak at particular points of a season. I don't know if it is the same with football. And, and I wonder if that's the reason why right across the world, what you see more often than not are league competitions rather than the U.S. system where you have um, a, a regular season and then um, you, you have the post season, which more often than not ends up in a knockout situation. Now, for football, I, I have said this a number of times, I'm not a massive fan of the format that is utilized in the Jamaica Premier League. I understand why the organizers would want it that way because you want this big grand finish to the tournament and you want to build excitement. And that was done last season um, and even seasons before. But for me, the drawback for that is that you have teams who have performed at a high level for six months and they may have one bad match. They may not even have a bad match because you could um, play two quality matches, end up in a draw and lose in penalties and all your season's work goes down the drain like that. So I'm not a fan of it. Um, and... Uh, but at the end of the day, you have to get it done. Yeah. Everyone understands what the situation is going into the season. And so I guess as a coach, you have to figure out now, how do we strategize so that we can peak at the back end? But I don't suspect yeah. it's as easy for football, a team sport, as it might be for individual yeah. sports. Yeah. Having said that, I, I agree with you because I don't like the format myself. I prefer uh, a, a season rewarding a team that is the best, most consistent All around. based on the weight of the performance yeah. throughout the entire season. But I would suggest as well that a lot of times that teams do well in the regular season and then don't go all the way to win through the playoffs. Quite often, for my reading, it's not so much tired legs or peaking too early. There is something about playoff sport that requires a certain mental toughness and clinical efficiency, desire and hunger, some of the factors that decide who wins playoff matches. So sometimes for me, it's not so much that a team has lost its form or peaked too early and don't deliver in the, in the playoffs, but there are some teams that just rise to playoff situations. And I think as well, there is something about the pressure that you are under when yes. you end the regular season as the number one team, the team that now every other team is it's going for. Yeah. Um, yes. It's different handling that pressure than when you finish fifth and sixth. There's sure. no pressure on you going through the playoffs, and that can sometimes um, play a part. All right. Both coaches, that's the Arnett Gardens coach and the Waterhouse coach, along with CEO of Professional Football Jamaica Limited, Owen Hill, shared their sentiments about the recently announced monthly grants of 150,000 Jamaican dollars to each of the 14 clubs in the league by Minister of Sport, Olivia Grange. 
that's good. Any support, every support is, is important. And that will, of course, do something good for the, for, for, for the players and, and for the club. Um, so, I mean, we must, we, we must um, applaud her and show appreciation, appreciation for that. And I mean, all the clubs will benefit in some way, shape or form, you know, so very good. To the minister, we really appreciate that. It's going to, be, it's going to go a far away. I mean, a notation, notation to help us, our, our notation. I mean, can honor the field. These players put in a lot of work um, day in and day out. And I mean, that would have gone. Uh, so yes, kudos to the, to the ministry for that contribution and we are grateful for it. The government has always been a partner with us. Um, so I mean, they continue to do that through the ministry and the SDF. Um, I think the clubs are very happy because again, it helps them to offset a couple of operational expenses that they may have. Still, you know, not necessarily where we'd want it to be, but we give many thanks. So, you know, thank the minister, thank the ministry, thank the SDF. Um, and any other partner that we have on board, um, we thank you because without you, again, it wouldn't be possible. Yeah, well said, Owen Hill, I think. Um, 150,000 Jamaican dollars, Lance and Mariah, um, just over 960 US dollars. That's what each club will be getting monthly. And as Owen Hill 10, said... 10,000. What did I Nine, say? 900. It would be 9,000, it. Would it? No. 9,000 US? Yeah. No, 900. I think you've got your Wilma's math off. It's 150,000 Jamaican, Jamaican dollars, dollars. Yeah, that's right, yeah. um, to each club okay. <laughs> okay. <All right>. per <laughs> month. <laughs> it's all right. Yeah, you, you almost got me there, Lance. So, yeah, so completely agree with Owen Hill, though. Um, yes, not exactly where you would want it to be. Um, but at the same time, I think you have to applaud the government for this initiative um, because it is an opportunity, as um, Marcel Gale said, um, to offset some operational costs that the, the, the clubs will have. And you're always going to want more, um, but you have to start somewhere. And I think you have to applaud the government for stepping in in this instance. Yeah, what's for sure is running any club, be, taking part in any sport is expensive. And as you said, Ricardo, you always want more because there are always areas to develop. And playing sport is very expensive. I mean, we all know that. So for me, I think it's a good initiative for the government. It's a good look. And then, you know, now that they've allotted this amount, of course, the players will be looking forward to a couple years hopefully they can get a raise <laughs> i don't know if it's enough to get them a raise <laughs> but it's it's definitely a good start lance yeah um not a lot of money to be no. quite honest but um as the coaches just mentioned um uh marcel gale from waterhouse and uh, xavier gilbert from arnett Gardens and and owen hill suggesting it will help because the the clubs need the clubs need the funding because it's a uh, it takes a lot to run these clubs and these clubs quite often run in, in deficit financially so any amount would be would be appreciated so they don't, don't want to be ungrateful yeah for sure and it's also understanding that you get hundred and fifty thousand Jamaican dollars per month for um, this year but when you go back to the negotiation table, if there is such a thing with the government, then you can ask for a little bit more next year. So you That's welcome what, what you get this year, but you get ready um, to request even more the next time around. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. the plan. Mm, that's Hopefully. The plan indeed. <laughs> All right, let's take a break on the Sports Smack Zone. When we return, Lance Whitaker will be talking about his favorite sport. No, it's second. He'll probably have a box off. <laughs> <laughs>